folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week, which, surprisingly enough, is a highly successful R-rated superhero film from Marvel that came out on February 12, 2016, you know, this year. Yep, I'm talking about the Merc with the Mouth himself, Deadpool. Yep, a story about a mercenary who was subjected to an experimental regenerative mutation just to cure his cancer and he winds up getting healing superpowers even though he was about to get his revenge on the guy who um, put him there yep which turned out to be Ajax it started out back in the 90's at this rate February 1991 as part of the X-Men universe had tons of comics it was actually one of the darkest comics they ever had that definitely got away with it. But, yep, if you think of it this way, this was like an ultra violent Spider Man. And instead of shooting web slingers, he just uh, goes around, you know, using a bunch of guns and ammo and has two blades on the back. His old costume is all covered in red and black. Definitely perfect for him. He comes up with all these wise-cracking jokes. He breaks the fourth wall all the time. And then he goes around killing bad guys. There you go. <laughs> That's Deadpool. Now, this has been in development for a very long time. In fact, um, Studio Artists and Entertainment, which is now Lionsgate, was actually planning to actually make a new Deadpool movie at the time. Because they had to deal with Marvel. But then that didn't work out, so then they decided that New Line Cinema was going to pick up the rights. But unfortunately, it was picked up under Turnaround. But Ryan Reynolds got the role, because uh, he was very um, interested in it, and I could tell. Because Ryan Reynolds was doing the Blade Trinity, and later he went on to play the role, as we know it today, you know, Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Deadpool which he made his appearance on X-Men Origins Wolverine. Um, but then the producer, Lauren Schiller Downer, who, who owns the production company, the Donner Company, wanted to erase everything that happened in X-Men Origins Wolverine and decided to have him get his own standalone movie. And there you go. But, of course, they had to take the risk because seeing that it has that material, that, yep, it had to be hard R-rated. Which, I know this movie had a controversy somehow. Even though they did start getting all the test footages um, a few years ago on the internet, and it had a leaked script, too. Just recently, before the film came out, uh, beyond the trailers, uh, Grace Randolph wanted to sign a petition to give it a PG-13 rating mostly because of an eight-year-old kid who wanted to see this movie well that didn't work out because apparently why would you want to give this movie a PG-13 rating exactly where, where you see lots of headshots gratuitous nudity and all this other stuff that's in the mix I don't think so it'll probably take a lot of time in the editing room taking up all this stuff and it'll just end up being like Robocop 3 all I can say is thank God that it stayed as R-rated as it should be because we don't want to see a PG-13 Deadpool movie we sure don't so I'm sorry but I totally disagree with Grace on this one and I think that just doesn't work. I mean, after all, she did used to work for Marvel for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Tough luck. But, I'm just happy that the film finally got what it deserves. Already at number one at the box office. Earning $69.3 million out of its $58 million budget. And it shows that... This was indeed the highest grossing R-rated film we ever had to date. And, wow. <laughs> that took guts. But anyway, let's get to the film. 
It stars Ryan Reynolds with Miranda Brocklin, Ed Skirin from the movie The Transporter Refield, TJ Miller from Cloverfield. He's also been in several films like uh, Big Hero 6. Gina Carano, Brianna Hildebrand, and her feature film debut. Stefan Kapesic and Leslie Uggams. It's written by Red Reese and Paul Wernick, the two guys behind Zombieland, and it's directed by Tim Miller. The movie begins where we meet a mercenary named Wade Wilson, who's played by Ryan Reynolds, who meets his love interest, Vanessa Carlisle, who's played by Miranda Brockman at a local bar that's owned by his best friend Weasel, who's played by T.J. Miller, who one year later, after making lots of love with each other, he finally proposed to Vanessa and she accepts. Suddenly, he collapsed and we soon learn that he's been diagnosed with terminal cancer. And while Vanessa want to remain by his side, he doesn't want her to watch him die. So then he meets a recruiter from a special program known as Weapon X to approach Wade to offer an experimental cure for his cancer. So at the laboratory, he meets two villains named Ajax and Angel Dust, both played by Ed Skarin and Gina Carano, who injects Wade with a serum designed to awaken Latin mutant genes that would subject him for days filled with torture and inducing stress and, and straps Wade into an airtight chamber which uh, raises and lowers the oxygen level to keep Wade constantly on the verge of asphyxiation. So unfortunately he develops a healing factor that cures his cancer but leaves him severely horribly figured uh, as a side effect. So he finally escapes from the chamber and attacks Ajax but told him that his disfigurement can be cured. So then Wade had appels him with a red bar and leaves him for dead in a burning laboratory. And once he survives he was trying to attempt to return to Vanessa, but he failed to do so because he doesn't want Vanessa to see his horribly disfigured face. So he went to his friend Weasel at his bar, you know, since he already just showed him his face, and now he finally gets his revenge on Ajax just by creating his new secret identity known as, you guessed it, Deadpool. So Within several days, you know, he just goes around killing people, trying to find out where Ajax is. And I know he does reveal his real name simply as Francis Friedman. Yeah, he just goes around telling them where Francis is and going on a killing spree while dressing up as uh, Deadpool. Because he now finally got the right costume for it, you know, with uh, the red and, and black filled with uh, two blades on the back, lots of ammo, and just goes around you know, doing what he does best. You know, breaking the fourth wall, doing all these wisecracking jokes, and just goes around killing people. Which, that leads to the freeway sequence, which is actually in the opening. He took a taxi cab where he meets the pender, the taxi driver, who has a girlfriend that he wants to meet, which unfortunately his cousin was going after. And yeah, just giving uh, Deadpool his advice to, to get his revenge. And that's where, you know, he, he got out of the cab and he finally goes around killing more bad guys at a freeway. Yeah, with lots of, which only has 12 rounds on his gun and and just shooting them one by one until all the bullets are out. Yeah, and it was a, a very ultra-violent shootout. 
Well, he finally had a chance to find Ajax, who was in a motorcycle. And all until all of a sudden, we meet two X-Men guys, Colossal and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, both played by uh, Stefan Kapesic and Brianna Hildebrand. As you may already know, Colossal is basically a Hulk-like character who has the ability to transform his entire body with organic steel. So yes, <laughs> he's basically trying to give his advice to have uh, Deadpool join in the X-Men team, yeah, along with Negasonic Teenage Warhead, who is a, uh, a teenage uh, trainee who has the ability to mutate powers by using to detonate all these atomic bursts on her body and making all these explosions and and all that. So he tries to bring Deadpool in by handcuffing him to to Colossal until suddenly he cuts his hand off to escape and, and winds up in another apartment with a blind lady named Big Al who's played by Leslie Ungums who was just basically, you know, building a Ikea cabinet which just fell apart. All this time he finally gets his advice with Riesel to to make an arrangement to see Vanessa again. Yeah, by meeting her at a strip club to all of a sudden she's being kidnapped by Ajax and Angel Dust. So he finally already fearing rage and anger, the best thing to stop Ajax and Angel Dust was to bring in a whole load of guns and ammo and to team up with Colossal and Negasonic Teenage Warhead to stop them before it's too late. Well, what can I say? Other than the fact that it's truly one of the best action-adventure romantic comedy superhero films I've ever saw. And it's, once again, as I said it before, it's right up there with The Punisher, Robocop, yeah, the 1987 version that is, that's what I'm talking about, not that 2004 garbage. And of course, Dread, the 2012 reboot that we had. Yeah, it's definitely right up there. And it shows. I mean, they definitely took a lesson from Fox and Marvel's last film, Fan Four Stick. Yeah, I know, Fantastic Four reboot. I guess Fan Four Stick was a boring piece of shit and it shows this movie isn't even boring to the slightest you gotta stay true to the source material and this movie wasn't boring at all it had something it really did I mean everything from the slow motion action scenes in the freeway um, to the ending scene where he teams up with Colossal and Negasonic Teenage Warhead you know, battling against uh, Ajax and Angel Dust. I mean, God. This movie has it all. And it definitely had a perfect love story, too. That just wasn't, uh, you know, cookie-cutter type of love story that we've seen in today's movies. But it definitely works, considering that it was released in February. And it was the perfect time for Valentine's Day, too. Which already passed, but nevertheless... I mean, Ryan Reynolds definitely nailed this role perfectly. He's definitely the right choice to play Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Deadpool. I mean, I just never forget all these wisecracking jokes that he had. I mean, there were several others, but I just don't want to give too much of it away. But let's just keep it that way. Um, T.J. Miller as Weasel was great, too, as his uh, buddy. He's like... He does uh, crack some jokes here and there, like, there is one scene in the movie that uh, I think I'll just mention right away, because I know it's in the trailer too. When Wade had just finally uh, revealed his um, horribly disfigured face, um, Weasel says, You're haunting! You look like an avocado had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado. And he says, Thank you. <laughs> so the next one he just says, you look like Freddy Krueger face fucked a topographical map of Utah. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, yeah, there's several others too. Um, 
Uh, but anyway, one of my favorite moments also, uh, back to the, uh, this freeway scene, was when they started to do some slow motion scenes. I know that's in the trailer too, but it's when, you know, already since he just killed all these bad guys, well, the car starts flipping, and when it was in slow-mo, you know, suddenly his head appears, and then he just looks straight at the screen, you know, breaking the fourth wall, saying, Shit! Did I left the stove on? <laughs> and then, yeah, it just continues. Yeah, there was a lot of great scenes in this movie. So much that <laughs> I just can't help but laugh and laugh and laugh. I mean, I haven't been this um, happy since I saw um, the Peanuts movie and all these other movies I've seen already, but nevertheless, <laughs> it was fun. As for the supporting cast, I thought Miranda Brockman was very sexy, tough, attractive, and beautiful as Vanessa. And it definitely had terrific chemistry between her and Wade. It really sparks. Um, I also love Colossal, you know, the giant uh, Hulk-like character made out of organic steel who could definitely break everybody's bones in their body. <laughs> yeah, in fact, he actually did do that to Deadpool too. in that one scene, just when he refuses to join both of them, him and, and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, you know, to go back to his mansion. And speaking of Negasonic Teenage Warhead, yeah, she was another badass uh, X-Men character. I mean, she could definitely you know, use her powers to, to make an atomic bomb. And it shows. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when, whenever she does that. It was just perfect. I mean, it definitely works. And also, the villains, Ajax and Angel Dust, um, Ed Skedrin did a fine job playing him. You know, even though most of the time he just keeps saying, What's my name? What's my name? What's my name? To, to Raid after he found out about his real name. <laughs> because he keeps saying it all the time. He keeps mocking him completely. And I know that one scene, I, I, I want to mention this already, was when <laughs> he killed several of the bad guys and suddenly, he actually uh, spell out his name for him <laughs> on the ground. And I, I thought that was just <laughs> hilarious. Um, I know, I know. I, I, I don't want to give too much. But, but it also had some great music. Uh, some great choice of 80s and 90s. Like, um, for instance, they played Angel in the Morning by Olivia Newton-John. They also had Salt and Pepper's Shoop. Yeah, I remember that song too because I saw the music video. I heard it back in 1993, so it definitely has that feel to it. It, it definitely works well for Deadpool's um, theme song, I believe. <laughs> yeah, he actually did his own rap in, in the movie too. Just to stay in the credits, um, there is indeed another post credit um, at the end of the film, which. Yeah, it does uh, just an element from an 80s film that I really enjoy, but nevertheless. So always stay in. And I love the opening sequence too. I mean, it was definitely well made. I mean, Tim Miller is basically best known for doing all these um, great title sequences and, and some of the other Marvel films. But not too many, though. But uh, he did do one for for the Dark World, for his um, animated sequence. So that was probably the main reason why he finally got the job to direct his first feature, and that is his first feature. So <laughs> I'm hoping that he'll be able to do more films like this in the future. Because let's face it, he was the right choice. Yeah, and the two writers, Red and Paul. I mean, yeah, they. He, they definitely did a great job writing all the material that they had. I mean, I could tell because uh, Zombieland was one of the best works they ever did when it comes to all this uh, hilarious humor that went into it. And it worked. Because it all this stuff, all this material is basically on PC. So, <laughs> so 
So I knew they were going to get away with it. Yeah, there's some nudity in the film. Not too much, but that's okay. It just had plenty of action that went into. I mean, lots of blood. Not much gore, but, but there were blood. Mostly CGI blood. And... Man, and incredible stunts, too. I mean, you can even tell Rhino... You can even tell Reynolds had done several of his stunts that he did. I mean, he definitely created it. Um, and not to mention he's the producer of the film, so it makes sense. Even though the score was done by Tom Hockenborg, and yep, and the cinematography that was done by Ken Singh, he definitely knew exactly what he was doing when they did all these terrific shots. And there wasn't any shaky cams whatsoever either, so it's just, it was right there. It works. This was definitely his film, and I really enjoyed it. A lot. I would definitely see this movie again and again and again, and I just never get tired of it. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. So anyway, I give Deadpool an awesomely good time, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.